Transitioning from nursing to carpentry isn't the norm. But when she made up her mind over 25 years ago to go into that line of business, she stuck to her decision. And she's here today to tell the story. Her name is Agatha Eric Odorie, and she's the CEO of Agatha's Designs Limited. Her story is truly inspiring. I've heard part of it. I can't wait to hear it all. And I'm sure it will inspire you too. She's called The Lady Carpenter. This is the exclusive with Kemi Ajmobi. Sit back and enjoy. Um, a lot of people don't know that I was born in Sierra Leone. And uh, my parents are both Nigerians. And um, so we grew up in Sierra Leone and formally call it Saro. So during the process after the death of my father, I used to help my mom. And I did help her in the market. She was a petty trader and then she became a farmer. So when it was time for me to go to university, we were the first set of nurses, of doctors. But as you're aware, my educational level was not so fantastic. So I couldn't do medicine. So we were chosen to do nursing. And at that time, we needed to listen to our parents. So I didn't have control over that. My auntie said, just go into nursing, finished. And so I took time off, went into nursing, did what we call an SRN, and then came to Nigeria. So when I arrived in Nigeria, and you know, it was a very trying time for us. So I met a lady called Phil Mackenzie. She's half Scottish. And so she had a workshop in a papa. So I lived with her. And so she began to teach me how to make curtains. So we started, first of all, with curtain design. And then she had a carpentry shop. After some time, she closed it down. And then she started work with Mab. But during the process, all the ladies in her house were involved. So we would go to the carpentry shop. We would sit down there from nine o'clock in the morning to six o'clock without a salary. So I learned how to use the bandsaw. I learned how to clean wood. I learned how to nail. I learned how to make um, little pieces of furniture, prototypes. And she began to teach us about templates. So, at that time, I was still in nursing school. So as soon as I finished, I didn't even go to collect the certificates. I went straight into the workshop, got myself involved, and she started teaching me how to make upholstery sofa. And so it was at that point in time that I took interest in this, because back home, I didn't know anything. So I give my credit to her and God. So she taught me, and so I learned over the years with her. And so that's how my career started. I'm someone who has been through the old, someone who's getting their hands dirty, someone who understands what they're dealing with, someone who, it's not just the degree, because Kelly Hoppen didn't have one but she was, she's the most celebrated interior designer today in the UK. So I follow her, she's a mentor to me, private mentor, in the sense that even though I don't know, I've met her only once, but I read all her stories, I try and buy all her, her, her books, I watch all her projects and I learn. So someone who has been through the system, especially when you understand what you're dealing with from space planning, more of the carpentry work. Because I realized that if you don't have that basic carpentry knowledge, you won't understand what I call furniture skill. Yes, there are skills that are international, but when you have giant people, how do you manage that? So those sorts of experience that you have been through really can make one become an interior designer or a decorator? Well, hmm, it's, it's a journey. It's a real journey. 
I started first of all in Okubaba, when you had all the wood markets. Um, I didn't have a workshop. So in Okubaba, I had a day wurisa. So I would go to Okubaba, engage the carpenters, but because I know carpentry, I'll tell them what to do, I'll teach them, I'll draw out a little bit for the things I want, I'll do my fab fabric selection. And so we began to make very good furniture. I've made furniture for very many people in this country. I mean, the days of, I don't want to mention names because I don't have their permission, but I made beautiful furniture for top management of GTB in the past. I made furniture for very many other people. Like I said, I don't have the permission to mention a name, but I can mention a bank or not an individual, but an institution. And so in my days of Okubaba, I produced very good quality um, fabric sofas. I, I brought out the best. And so I became very well known. Ah, go to Agathas, go to Agathas, go to Agathas. And through that journey, I began to educate myself. I, I had an Italian boss finishing marble. I worked under him. I can tell you about the, all the names of the different types of marble where we refer to as stone. I can tell you about the processing. So at that point in time, I learned a lot. And I, I, I also worked on a lot of projects. And so as, as, I, as I look at things today, as it's unfolding, I'm like, what's going on here? So that's how it all began. That process of having a workshop in Bagada, that process of talking to a kill dry man and telling them how I want my wood to be killed dry, that process of speaking to my upholsterer and cutting out templates is my starting point. It's close, but it was one of the Italian companies that um, had um, the facility to install marble in people's houses. He did quite a number of big jobs in this country, and um, but he had a heart attack and died. So um, after a while, the company had to fold up. His kids couldn't take it over, but he was a fantastic teacher. I mean. Italians are passionate about what they do and it's the same passion I took over, you know. I remember my boss then, um, Franco, would say to me, Agatha, I said, yes sir, when I'm talking, you wait. So, um, unfortunately, finishing my bowl is closed. When I started, when I started, I was not a Christian, I was not a believer. I, I was born Catholic, so I used to come to a Catholic church. And in one of the projects I was working, and someone had ministered to me. So at the time when I was working on that project, the name of my company was Bolly A Limited. So when I got ministered to, I started in Napapa Parish. You know, I met the likes of the Leo Madez and the rest, you know. And Pastor Tony Rappo, it's my pastor, he trained me. So um, one day he had a revelation and said, why don't you just call this company Agatha's Interior? I remember then it was a double four we all came out for lunch. And you know, Pastor Tony used to be very strict on us. I was um, in Redeem, I was deputy head of Hushwin. So Pastor Tony just said to me, I think you should just rename the company and I called it Agatha's Interior. And I was also given the opportunity to do, do Daddy Gio's first house in camp. Wow. Yes. And after I finished, what did Daddy Gio said to me? Or oh, Mommy Gio? I, he said to me, God gives you the desires of your heart. Open your arms. And I opened my arms and he said, God bless your hands. And that was it. That was it, cruising. That was it. I wouldn't say I'm in a male-dominated industry. I would say it's a maybe 50-60 or 50-40 or 50-50. Yeah, well, okay, in terms of carpentry. Well, how have I? I just focused. 
and that's the word focus you just need to know what you want in life and you continue in that sphere of life you don't need to listen to anything and you must pray because you know the bible says it blesses the works of our hands so i i would say male dominated yes but do you know something they love me because the men thought i was tomboy and they love the fact that eh, we have a female carpenter you know so um i would say they were very encouraging the men wanted to teach me i remember i had once a Ghanaian carpenter peter peter was always coming to say madam i need you to know about this joint you're not learning about this joint so they were very supportive the men were very supportive they 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 even the apprenticeship course they even the apprentice they will they will want to go to the market for you they will want to help you out they'll follow you to where we are buying our tack nails or we are buying our our what we used to call it tiru at that time the webbing robbers they were very very supportive i tell you once more kemi the men were supportive they were happy with me and so that allowed me to blossom um lucrative it would be yes and no it's dependent on what sector or what area of the business are you in the luxury end are you in the middle class or you are in the bottom end or are you just a regular carpenter so um i could say i could grade the skills but it would be for me a yes and the reason why i would say yes and i encourage young people to come in because Nigeria itself is an imagining market. Kemi, there are many people that are sleeping under the bridge. So there are going to be housing, a mass housing that's going to be built. So even if I don't get the job, the local carpenter will get the job. You know, so I believe that it's a lucrative business. A business where a client gives you money to do their work. Do you know that? Um, when I take a project, the client has to pay, depending on the company policy, 70%. Kimi, if you have a job for 10, 10 million naira, you collect 70%. I mean, as a female entrepreneur, we are very tactful. And we are not wait wasteful. You have a lot of money to work with. So it's one profession that you are paid upfront so it's lucrative it is indeed um you don't have to beg if he brings his house and you want and he wants you to do it it's got to bring the money so for me lucrative and i encourage young ladies to to go into it you know to start a career register in any of the carpentry shop register there are quite a bit of interior design um um, um classes being run in nigeria register and you do well you do well i mean for me when i talk to the girls that i mentor i said to them continue you will do well you know i said in the graves you have the best heads so you've got to mentor other people for me if someone didn't mentor me someone didn't teach me i won't be here so information and knowledge is not something you should hold back you should give it to everybody that comes that appreciate it so for me that's what I do if you come to me and you want to be a mentor I take you up and I said to you come in once a week in the showroom walk around enjoy your eyes and begin to fall in love with the things you see so I give back to the society to um, little um, primary schools I, I tell them my story look I tell them the story from grace from grass to grace I tell them every day that you can do better than I have done just focus so mentorship is something I encourage in every profession that people should t take out time and mentor and you know we're an imagining market we're an, we're an imagining economy if we don't teach how will people learn I, I, I bring in Italians to teach people about painting you know st application of stucco so i give back to the society that has given all of this it's not that i have a lot of money it's not that i am rich 
but I'm satisfied and you've got to give back and that's that's the same thing that the, the Holy Spirit keeps teaching us if if the Holy Spirit doesn't minister to us we will not receive from the Father so every time we get ministered to we too have to minister we go out and make disciples in the marketplace well um, Kemi, Dr. Luca as I call him I went to a fair in Bologna it was the tile fair it was in you know the sanitary wear and tile fair and then we call it Chisai Bologna and I met the company Maca Corona and I said to them this is the company that I'm going to work with and I'll tell you what it is Kemi um, past venture is a one-stop shop now my idea came from design center in London wherein you can go into design center if you want to drop your home in the UK from the tile to the sanitary wear to the furniture to the curtain design and all its accessories are situated under one building so you don't have to move from place to place or you don't have to go to Orile today tomorrow you go to Yaba market and uh, tomorrow you go to Mushi market no that's what I have done with past venture with my husband you know I'm married to an architect I'm married to one of the renowned architects so uh, Mr. Eric Kudori um, as I formally call him Eric <laughs> so now when I met Dr. Luca he's in charge of the African region West Africa so we had a good talk I told them what my ideas would be and we began to put it together today we have past ventures that is called procurement of architectural systems and solution so we are a procurement company what do you want give it to us we will bring it to you from procurement to the hospitality business I mean, recently we worked with, um, um, as you're aware, worked on the Ebony Life Plaza. And Mo Abudu is a wonderful woman, always giving an opportunity to other female entrepreneurs. Um, and she built a wonderful stuff there. You all know where it's situated. The hotels, we did all the procurement, we did um, all the, what we call the case goods. The restaurants, the um, the outdoor living. I worked with a lady called Tola. I design. Fantastic job. I mean, Mo was specific. I mean, you need to work for Mo. You need. She will push you to the brain. But guess what? You will be happy after because guess she will have given you the strength. She 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 radiates a lot of power. That's how I see Mo. From my staff in the office to say antimo antimo so when they see antimo coming everybody is at you know on their toes that's who Moabudu is i'm sorry i'm going to talk about her because she has i did her house and she has given me a platform you know to excel i mean i said to mo i said don't worry we'll do another project and she's so happy so and that's one woman who believes in nigeria i mean you need to go to the white orchid hotel you need to see the white orchid, the internal. I mean, it's a mixture of African and European. I mean, it's amazing. The headboards are beautiful. Those things, if Mo puts them in a museum in America, they will cost a fortune in, in five years' time. And talk about the pillows, the quality of the pillows, the bed linen in White Orchid is incredible. I mean, we were so happy to have worked with her on, worked with her on that project. I mean, CPC, congratulations. I design, congratulations. Agatha's interior, congratulations. And the many suppliers who worked on that project, well done. My name is uh, Luca Beneventi. I'm the area manager of Ceramica and Marca Corona, the oldest Italian tile manufacturer. I've been working for this company since the past eight years and I'm very happy to be in Lagos. Well, our relationship dates back four years. 
and uh, I met Agata during an exhibition in Bologna called Cersai, the most important event um, for um, the tile industry. Um, at the time, PASS, the space in which we are here, wasn't uh, yet ready. Um, so we started discussing about the possibility of having a distributor in Legos of high quality tiles and we decided to create this space that eventually last year became a reality. Um, you see, it didn't take long for me to realize that Agatha has an amazing creative power. She sees something and she already knows where to place it in terms of design. She understands quality, but she's also understanding the need of her clients. So immediately she has this eye for um, interior decoration, beauty, and obviously, again, the need of a client. That is quite unique, I believe. Um, normally, um, when I work with other clients of mine, they're more interested in the pure business aspect of the industry. Agatha, in this case, is much more Italian, let me say. She loves the design. She understands design and she's trying hard to also uh, create awareness in Nigeria of um, beautiful Italian products, basically. Yeah. Uh, especially in Africa, where we are perfectly aware of this gender imbalance, let me put it this way. Uh, but definitely the amount of energy that she has to put in a, a business, in an ability to convince client to go for quality would be at least double the amount of energy that for a man is necessary. But I also think that uh, being a woman um, brings into the picture something completely unique that sometimes men they can't recognize. Um, I believe that um, the sophistication of a high and the ability to put together concept is purely a gift that is of uh, her being a woman. Well, Nigeria is a very challenging environment and um, sometimes uh, strive for quality, try to allow people to understand they have to be patient in order to get the products that they want. They can get just, um, you know, shortcuts and get the first product available in the market. Uh, it's definitely a challenge, but I think Agatha has enough experience since at least the past 20 years, 25 years, to be able to overcome all of these challenges. So Marca Corona, as I said, is the oldest Italian tile manufacturer. We were established in 1741. So let's say that patience is uh, something that bring us together. We know that uh, it's only with time that we can create results. And I believe this um, will be our future together, understanding each other and being able to wait for the time to be mature for this business definitely to uh, explode. Let me put it this way. Tiles are not just a mere commodity. Tiles in the, tiles in the past, uh, let's say, five years, um, they have uh, improved uh, technologically a lot. As you can see behind me, we have very large slab from 120 by 240, and that's expand the area of application of porcelain. So now you can use porcelain for very technical solution like a raised floor, ventilated facade, outdoor area, swimming pool. So I think that for architect, contractors and uh, private clients, having a one-stop shop for all their needs in terms of uh, uh, interior and architectural solution would be ideal. So definitely PASS is the place to go if you are needing for one-stop solution for all your architectural needs. Over there, the perception about uh, West Africa and Nigeria in particular is a little bit biased. Um, since I uh, started to uh, come to West Africa, I just realized the amount of potential in terms of creativity and uh, 
energy of the people. My dream basically would be one day to have a, a designer that is going to design a line of products for us. So I think it's about time that things need to be like, like to change the perception. So I want uh, young creative artists or designer or project maker from, from Africa and West Africa in particular, in Nigeria specifically, to start doing something for the industrial West. The greatest lesson the life has taught me, gave me, is to love God and stay focused on God. And knowing that there is a time for everything. The challenges will come, but who's going to be your strength? The Holy Spirit. If you do not hold the Father, just like the lady with the, wom uh, with the woman, the woman with the issue of blood, she held the garment of Jesus and the power left him and she got healing. The greatest things in life, the challenges, the lessons I've learned is to be focused, love God, love my neighbor as myself, which is not always easy, but also remain focused and always smile and be humble. Kemi, in this store, if, I, if a client is upset, I go down on my knees in my store. I mean, this showroom is 1,200 square meters display. So for me, humility, plus, plus. I will beg you, I will apologize, I might send you flowers, I might send you a bottle of perfume. I'm just telling you, I'm sorry. So those things are the lessons I learn in life. And I hope tomorrow I can be better. Um, find a mentor. Find someone that you believe in. Find someone you can trust. Talk to them about your problems. Read. But let me say this to you. Kemi, Lagos Business School, it's different from when you're in London. And the Nigerian economy defines all odds. So you need to find a mentor that you can talk to that can help you, that can talk to you about their challenges so you can see you're not alone. And my advice to them is, don't give up. Don't give up. If you give up, you're a loser. Don't give up. Stay there. If you need to downsize, downsize. But don't shut down your business because better days will come. And we all know now, it might be tough, but the better days are gonna come. Back of Europe. Okay. okay. Because I didn't know them. It's just the things that were out there about me. That I got a letter from a Spanish company talking, that, talking to me about an award that they wanted to give to me. And that they were hosting the award in Germany. The Arc of Europe Award for me was breaking because I got there and I found so many people doing different things and you'll be amazed what they're doing from education to being an entrepreneur to be um, a charity person you know what it was amazing for me it was an eye-opener the arc of europe abroad was an eye-opener lawyers i mean what they do with um, and convictions that are injustice universally we had people all the way from brazil architects interior designers all sorts cut across board was the arc of europe award and for me it gave me a lot of it challenged me to do more it challenged me 
to work harder than I used to work. And even when you are receiving that award, they tell you it's a stepping stone. You must go back and do what you can do and do it much, much better. Final words will be, Kemi, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank you for running after us. Thank you for finding us. Thank you for being, I mean, first time I, I saw a publication, I said, who is she? I don't even know her. I said to you, Kemi, thank you. Thank you to Business Day. You're growing. We know you. We know that your foundation is solid and we know you're going to go places. I say thank you to the crew. I say thank you to everybody.